Welcome to the Continuum Lab. The original Control Freak video series and all of the instruments that I made in that context were never meant to do anything more than just entertain me and my YouTube audience for a while. I made keyboards, wind instruments, <laughs> string instruments, percussion and drums, and as the concept grew I started to take it a bit more seriously. Since then, I've become convinced that I should turn this whole concept into a workshop and try to sell it to schools and such. And that's why I signed up for the Maker Fair, offering to give a workshop there to test out the concept and also to prove most of all to myself that this is actually a good idea. Well, spoiler, I did the workshop and it turns out it's a great idea. So as I was preparing this workshop, it became clear to me that I would need to remake some of my original instruments to take advantage of the brand new breakout board and the new sensor modules. So I decided to bring three instruments, a keyboard, some percussion and a wind instrument. Now these instruments are prototypes meant for my prototype workshop and as such these videos are not polished tutorials. Now I am preparing a final series of instrument designs which will form the core of future workshops but this this is where it all starts. So that's what this video is all about. I filmed the making of all three of these instruments before the workshop and this is the video about the keyboard. The original Control Freak capacitive keyboard was the first instrument I made in the series. Later I installed a DIY breath sensor inside, turning it into a MIDI melodica of sorts. This new keyboard will not include that functionality. But let's get into it. First of all, you need a suitably sized box. I'm recycling one from some electronics, but you can also make your own with recycled cardboard. I'll get back to that in a future video. Then you need to measure out the keyboard section, deciding on the size and position of the keys, measuring and drawing your key template. There. Then it's time to decide on an electrode material. Many things are possible. Really any conductive material will do. This copper sticky tape is one of my favorites, but conductive paint is also a viable option. After cutting out pieces for the keys, stick all of them down into position individually. Then perforate the box once for each key where the cable will pass through. I want to add a pitch bend interface to the keyboard. You know, like the typical joystick on MIDI keyboards, except I'll make it out of the same capacitive sensors as the keys. There, two sensors should do it for a rudimentary slider. Next, prepare the cables of the multiplexer module. Apply some solder to the keys next to the cable holes. Pass the cables through one by one and solder them into place. The numbers of the cables coming off the multiplexer follow the chromatic order of the keys, left to right. Damn it, the camera cut out while I was doing that. Here's what I actually mean. As we are already using the 16 connections of the multiplexer for the keys, we will have to draw out two individual cables to the pitch bend sensors. Then plug in the multiplexer module, making sure to get it the right way around. All of the capacitive sensors need to be covered by a dielectric layer. I'm using standard transparent packing tape. We also need to make a hole for the USB cable to pass through. There, let's tape it down inside so it doesn't rattle around too much. And that's it. Let's go plug this in and see if it works. Oh, actually, wait a second. I'm forgetting something. Because this instrument is meant to be duplicated at the workshop, I need to address the fact that the copy will surely have different sensitivity on its sensors because of small differences in construction, like the size or material of the capacitive sensors. To fix this, I'm going to install a calibration button which will be referenced in the code for the instrument. While this button is pressed, the calibration routine will adjust the maximum and minimum readings on each sensor, which will correct the mapping of the values to compensate for differences in the sensors. I actually installed two buttons here, but I never ended up using the second one, so we can safely ignore that. Okay, that's it. 
I hope you can appreciate how relatively easy that was and this keyboard really works. <laughs> The uh, sensor modules, the breakout board and the built-in calibration routine mean that you get easy repeatability and consistency in the response of these instruments even if you get a bit creative in their construction. So uh, take care, until next time and I'll see you in the continuum.